Before I start the episode off, I want to start by saying congratulations to my sister. She just graduated uh, college with a degree in kinesiology and I believe a minor in biology. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, Kata. Um, we're going to have her on the podcast at a later date to kind of go over her experience at Penn State, you know, like from freshman year through senior year, all that good stuff. If the audio sounds a bit different today, it's because the budget for CWC has gone up, I would say exponentially. Uh, your boy, your boy has got a new microphone. I don't, obviously, you, could, you, you can tell by now. It's a new microphone, new microphone stand. This is official equipment now. Now we're not working with, you know, um, USB microphones. These are XLR. I think they're called XLR. That's going to be mad embarrassing if it's not an XLR mic, but this is a legit dynamic microphone specifically meant for recording vocals. They use it in music and all that shit, but this is like the shit that all the legit podcasters use. So it's great to actually have, uh, you know, like a palpable budget increase. The next big thing besides obviously like a studio shift, which is not going to happen anytime soon, would be a camera, but these cameras are fucking expensive guys. I mean, literally for one camera that could record upwards of 30 minutes, um, it, we're talking like three to four to five thousand dollars, and then that's not even with you know having a good quality lens attached to the camera. But you know whatever, that's a separate thing. Uh, if in case you're wondering, this is the Shure SM7B microphone with a Gator Frameworks mic stand, and then the actual recorder itself is a Zoom uh, Pod Track P4, I believe, and you know you just need an uh, SD card with that. Uh, but now that all the nitty gritty housekeeping shit is out of the way. Today's episode's gonna be, um, it's episode 50, so we're, we, we officially crowd, crossed 50 episodes, big 5-0, super happy to be doing that, super happy to continue the podcast. Uh, it's just me today. Um, the upcoming podcast that I have is, is the ones I'm really excited for. I mean, these are gonna be some really good quality episodes with a bunch of really good stories. We have some, I have some really good stories for, for you guys today, um, some stuff that I wanted to go over regarding health. I don't know if you could hear it, if this juicy ass microphone is picking up the kind of difference, slight difference in my voice. I'm getting over some sort of virus. I got, my family member got sick like last weekend. And it's funny because I, we had seen her through FaceTime. She was supposed to come for my sister's graduation party, but she ended up backing out because she wasn't feeling that well, but she said it was because of allergies. When we called her on FaceTime, I saw, you know, I've had allergies my whole fucking life. I saw her and I was like, that ain't no goddamn allergies. She still ended up coming the next day. Probably not the smartest thing. All I did was say bye to her. I hugged her bye. I didn't even eat, you know, like my, my dad had grilled up some juicy ass pork chops and steaks and all that shit. Um, the Sunday after the graduation party for my sister. And it was just like a smaller family get together. And she ate, out, we were outdoors on my parents' house's like deck, right? In the backyard. And I didn't even eat with her because she got there late. I ate before. I was inside watching TV. The only contact, the only contact I had with her was hugging her by. And my bitch ass immune system couldn't even take that exposure. And I got fucking sick. I don't know what it is. It's not COVID because she tested and she came out negative. But your boy felt like shit this entire week. I was literally bedridden for probably two days. Legitimately could not get up. Didn't have a fever, thank God. Took Tylenol. Uh, Tylenol? Did I take Tylenol? No, I took Dayquil and Nyquil like it was fucking water. I mean, I was taking shots of this shit like I was partying back in Penn State, which is another episode that's coming up. Um, shout out to Mike and Kata because they got me fucked up all those times. Anyways, uh, so yeah, this is going to be a very health slash like, yeah, I guess health themed episode. Um to, to just go over what I had symptoms wise, I don't know what it was, but it was like my head was hurting. I had crazy pressure in my sinuses, but it wasn't a sinus infection because that wasn't the main symptom. Main symptoms were really just like fatigue, headache, and like a crazy cough and congestion. That was about it. But I didn't have a fever. Um, I didn't have, you know, like a runny nose, anything like that. I don't think it was a sinus infection because... Mike actually recently had a sinus infection and he was like, he was floored for like two weeks. And he said that he felt like there was an elephant sitting on the fucking front of his face. That's how serious that sinus infection was. Um, thank God I did not have that. Cause I've had a couple of those and that's probably the sickest I've ever been in my life. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about 
some um, medical mishaps, I would say, is the theme of this episode. Uh, just for myself, obviously, because there's no guests to go over with me here. There's been a couple. I haven't, you know, I'm not too accident prone, but there's been definitely a couple of medical mishaps that I've had throughout my life. Let's take it way back to the very, very, very beginning, uh, earliest memories. Like we're talking elementary school now, right? Funny thing is, is after this past week where I was fucking floored, it, of course, these things never have a good timing. Hannah is on her, like she's, she works like a dog already. Okay. Um, my girlfriend, she works literally like already by default with her job, 10 hours to 12 hours a day. It's insane. Okay. Okay. On top of that, she is enrolled in a class because it's like a very limited uh, availability class. It's like a very prestigious class too in the world of animation. So she enrolled in that class, uh, was fortunate enough to be accepted uh, after she applied. And that workload on top of her normal workload is just a lot for any normal person to bear. I don't know. She's a superstar. I don't know how she does it. It's Wonder Woman, whatever. So she th- she's in her final two weeks of this, I would call it, three month long work sprint. Okay. This being week two, the next week, next week being the final week of work, this ailment, whatever ailment I just got, whatever sickness, virus, whatever it was, that shit literally floored me for an entire week. When I first started feeling sick, I told her about it. And she had asked me like, she was like, yo, like, please do not get me sick. Right. I'll take care of you. Like I'll cook and everything. Just don't you like, we didn't eat next to each other. Um, you know, I was coughing into my shirt and shit like that, obviously. I mean, that's just the courteous thing to do. And I actually slept out on this couch in our living room rather than in our bedroom, which is on the other side of the camera behind a wall, uh, because I didn't want to get her sick. We were good for the whole fucking week. And then for whatever reason, last yesterday, she started feeling like shit, like all of it just caught up to her in one day. Um, Or sorry, not yesterday, the day before yesterday night. So two days ago at night, it just hit her like right before she went to bed. It just all hit her. She started getting crazy congestion, same shit that I was experiencing. And then yesterday, all of yesterday, she was absolutely floored. So then it was my turn to take care of her. I'm over the worst of it by far now. I would say I'm like 97% back. I still have like a little bit of weird thing in my throat and, you know, like obviously congestion. But after having this whole fucking week of ups and downs, whatever, and getting Hannah sick, and then seeing her sick, it's crazy to think, like, now as an adult, I'm like, I never want to deal with being sick again, that shit sucks, I mean, I think everyone can agree, especially after COVID, that being sick is fucking horrible, but the reason it had me thinking, and the reason it's kind of funny, is because if you think, if I think about way back in the day, in elementary school, I feel like most of us did this, I used to try to, like, think or fake being sick, so that I could get out of going to school on certain days where I just did not want to fucking go. I think all of us are guilty of doing this. I mean, there's episodes, I mean, it's a trope, right? Like kids putting the thermometer, like the old mercury fucking thermometers back in the day when they thought that was a good idea under like heat lamps and shit to get the temperature to read higher so that they seemed like they had a fever, all that stuff, Ferris Bueller's day off, all that good stuff, right? I used to actually try to do that. I mean, I didn't fool anyone. Um, Probably my biggest excuse that I used was like stomach. Oh, my stomach is hurting, so I can't go. Uh, Because I kind of used to have a lot of diarrhea as a kid. I don't know why. At least in my memory, I did. So it's funny how like back then, I used to try to fake being sick to get out of going to school. And then now it's like, even sometimes, like on like, you know, when there were tests or something in elementary school, I used to be like, yo, please, like, let me get like a little cough or cold or something so I don't have to fucking go in. Now, as an adult who actually thinks with any, with a little bit more logic, I'm not going to say I'm the most logical fucking thinker, way, like the complete opposite of the spectrum. I never want to be sick. Again, that shit completely derailed all the plans I had for this week. Uh, It's fucking garbage being sick, obviously. But, you know, that's just my little um anecdote on that. So stories of being sick from elementary school, there's a bunch. Um, This isn't really sick, but this is like a medical mishap, I would say. I have really bad allergies. I mean, I don't know if you could see it on camera, but my fucking, I get eczema patches in the spring on my throat, my elbow pits. I don't know if you could, I don't know what the fucking, the elbow creases and the fucking uh, back back of my knee. Really bad eczema. Like, I don't know if you could see it on camera because this year is probably the best it's ever been, but typically it looks like a piece of fucking pizza with the cheese peeled off. 
just on my, like just raw, sometimes pussy. It's disgusting. Like I used to have to go on topical steroid treatments, but you know, now thank God, like that's kind of been exposed to be not the best form of treatment for that type of stuff. Cause, um, then people get reliant on that stuff and then the problem just gets worse. So I hated, I still kind of hate cream and creams and lotions and feeling oily, especially on my hands. And I don't know why I can't put lotion on my, my legs and then put pants over it. I feel disgusting when that, whenever, like, I feel like moisturized skin and then like clothes on top of it, it just gives me like an ick. So I had that since I was a kid, which is, thank God, I think the reason why I never actually would stick to the regimen of putting on the topical steroids, um, so it's gotten actually better. I just, over time, I guess you build up a natural immunity to it. But point is, is when I was in elementary school, I used to have the worst allergies, uh, coupled with asthma that I still have literally have my fucking inhaler right here. Funny enough. Uh, I would have to, I would have to stay in during recess time while all the kids were outside playing and probably in the months of, I would say May was probably the biggest month. Any, any peak springtime where like you get that, I mean, we lived in the suburbs where you get that light coating of just yellow dust on all the cars, the sidewalks, everything. And then when the sprinklers go on or there's like rain, you just see like within the streams of water that go into like the sewage system, you just see that yellow fucking collection of like juice going down. It's disgusting. It gives me the gross, like a gross vibe anyways, because obviously I'm allergic to the shit and I always associate that with bad vibes. Uh, so as a kid, I had really bad allergies and it would trigger my asthma. So the doctor used to tell me and my mom and my school that I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to go outside during recess during those, uh, during springtime, during peak springtime. So I got really close with my elementary school nurse. Shout out to Mrs. Willock. She's retired now. She's a fucking goat. And the reason I say this is because I used to go place obviously you love every kid loves recess but then in springtime they wouldn't let me go out so I would go into the nurse's office for that full I don't know what it was 40 something minutes with a Game Boy and I used to play I remember there was like an Incredibles game on the Game Boy that that was the shit okay I, I don't remember the official title and I don't even remember the official name of the Game Boy that I had I just remember it being a Game Boy and I played the Incredibles there was also a Harry Potter game that I played on there and those two games would fucking keep, keep me entertained for like all of elementary school. I used to just play just those two games. Um, that and then, you know, Mrs. Willock, she would entertain me. We'd talk, have conversations and stuff like that. And I would just chill inside the nurse's uh, office every single school day, Monday through Friday, for all the spring during recess. And I got close with this nurse, actually. And the reason why I'm bringing her up, this is kind of like a you know, foreshadowing for, for a future story is because her and I developed somewhat of a relationship. She would, she was like very close to me and my family, obviously, because, um, she would be taking care of me for all those days in the spring. And then because I got close with her, uh, she like, I have this thing where like, after I eat a meal, it's not any, I've never been diagnosed with anything, but I just realized like my digestive system I'd be taking shits mad quickly after I eat any meal for whatever reason. It's not like I need to go, but like coincidentally, I feel like after 30, 40 minutes after I eat something, I'm like, oh, I need to poop. So I'd go to lunchtime and I'd, I'd eat obviously in elementary school and I would go into the nurse's office, right? This is the story, by the way, of the first time I shit myself in elementary, probably actually the last time I shit myself. The only time I shit myself was in elementary school. And this is that story. So I used to go eat lunch and then we'd have gym. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. Fucking appendicitis. And I would go do gym, be perfectly fine, then go home right after gym because that was towards the end of the day. Well, this one day, I think we had like sloppy joes or something. So like that oily fucking shit sitting in my stomach. <coughs> so that's what I ate, right? And... You know, I'm still a fucking glutton, so I would eat a lot. Back then, I used to trade, like, snacks and shit with other people so I could get, like, their leftovers or, like, half their sloppy jar or whatever. So I would be eating these goddamn sandwiches, and then we'd go to gym class. Well, this one particular day, I guess it wasn't sitting right with me, and we were playing tag or something in gym. I can't remember what it was. Point is, is in the middle of the gym class, I just feel my stomach start doing cartwheels. Like, this thing is just 
looks like the fucking back of a cement truck. Like that spinning cylinder, I just felt like that was my my stomach. In my core, it was just turning. And I'm like, this is going to be a hot, liquidy diarrhea. Like I could already feel it just cooking and stewing inside my fucking gut. So I'm like, I need to get the fuck out of Dodge. I, I start panicking. And I just remember this overwhelming feeling of like, I needed to clench my asshole as hard as possible because this thing, it came, it like washed over me and it took over my, all of my senses in a matter of no joke, probably 15 seconds, like 20 seconds max. Cause I was fine playing gym. And then all of a sudden I just remember feeling like, okay, it's, this is an emergency. So I remember, I didn't even ask my gym teacher. The nurse's office was around the corner from the gym, the gym, uh, classroom like the gymnasium yeah the gymnasium for the elementary school so it was literally around the corner out the door around the corner down the hall right so I remember I didn't even ask the gym teacher if I could go to the nurse I just fucking started like doing this like diaper baby walk like I would my ass was just clenched and I was taking little micro steps shuffling all the way to the door I get to the door get out and I'm like I'm sweating at this point because I'm like Jesus Christ and I'm in I think like fourth grade or second grade, one of those two, and I'm walking, and I'm just clenching everything, all of my power within my being is just focused on keeping my sphincter as tight as possible, because I did not want any of this shit to go, obviously, you know, I'm wearing shorts, by the way, because it's, you know, like, I think it was closer to summer, the end of the school year, so I'm literally wearing shorts, and I think they were white, so I'm not about to just shit myself in white gym shorts, right, I'm just clenching, clenching, clenching. I get out of the gym. I make it down the hall. I make it all the way into the nurse's office. And she she already knows me by a first name basis, obviously. As I said before, we were very close, this nurse and I. And I'm like, dude, I just say, oh, Ms. Willock, I really need to use the bathroom. Like, it's an emergency. And she goes, okay, fine. She's like, yeah, of course, honey, go. So she points, she opens the door, right? I go into the bathroom. I close the door. Thank God the fucking bathroom was one of those light switches where when you turn it on, it just defaultly turns on like the fan inside the bathroom. And that fan was fucking loud. I don't know. It sounded like a wind tunnel whenever you turn that shit on. Thank God, because that was like the the covering noise for me to just blow my brains out of my asshole into this goddamn toilet. So I go in, I slam, I close the fucking door. I freaking slam that switch on and the, the, the wind turbine starts going. I'm like, thank God. I make it to the toilet, and I remember I pulled down my fucking pants, and right as I pulled down, right as I think I'm about to make it, the second my thumb enters my waistline, right, the 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 waistline of the shorts, and I start to push down to take off my shorts, I just couldn't hold it anymore, and I didn't even get my shorts off, It just, I just shit myself right there next to, like, about to sit on the toilet. It was the most defeating feeling, because I was literally like, damn, I was... I was literally 99% of the way there. I was at the doorstep, right, of successfully avoiding shitting myself, and I couldn't fucking pull through. And I just remember warm diarrhea. This is such a graphic episode already. Warm diarrhea just going down my inner thighs, right, and out the fucking pant legs down onto my shoes and socks. I was so embarrassed. It was not like liquidy liquidy. It was kind of like... um. The best way I could put it is if you've ever seen Jurassic Park 2 or 3, there's like a scene in one of those movies where uh, I think like Dr. Allen, whatever, his fucking cell phone, like they're calling a cell phone and the ring, I still remember the ringtone. It's like, like that. That was the ringtone for the fucking cell phone. And they were like, oh, I hear it. I hear it. Where is it? And they were looking for it. And it was in a, a pile of dino shit. And this pile of dino shit just looked like a mound. And it was just soft as fuck. That is what was coming out of my body, okay? So it was coming out, dividing into two because of the fucking shorts, and then going down each respective fucking short leg onto the floor, onto my shoes and socks and everything. It was such a defeating feeling. It literally looked like the Sloppy Joe, the inside of a Sloppy Joe just coming out of me, right? And I remember, like, I was crying, obviously, And the freaking nurse, she's outside and she's hearing this commotion through the wind tunnel noise. She hears me crying and then she comes and she knocks on the door and she's like, 
hey, what's going on in there? Is everything okay? And I'm I'm fucking bawling at this point. I'm like, I I I can't believe like I just shit myself. And I'm like, uh, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm like saying some shit in like a little kid way. I'm like, uh, can you call my mom? Like, and I asked her to call my mom because I, I was not going to leave that bathroom until my mom got there with like a fucking change of clothes. Thank God I was like smart enough to think about that. Cause I didn't, then I wouldn't have had to embarrass myself in front of the, the nurse. And she did. She called my mom, this lovely fucking nurse, again, goaded hall of fame nurse. She calls my mom. My mom drives. Thank God we were only like a three, four or five minute drive away from the elementary school. She drives from our house with clothes, socks, and shoes. She comes into the elementary school. She comes into the nurse's office. She knocks on the door. I'm in there on the toilet, you know, pants around my ankles with just like a mountain of shit inside my underwear. Like my underwear had caught most of it, but then there was obviously the, the stuff that was on the floor and everything. And I'm just sitting there on the toilet cold, you know, cause the fucking fan is still going. And I just remember sitting there for like, you know, 10 minutes because it took my uh, the nurse 10, 15 minutes for the nurse to call my mom, my mom to get the shit and then get over to the school. And she finally, I just remember hearing the sweet fucking uh, sound of my mom's voice on the other side of the door. She knocks on the door and she's like, hey, hey, I'm here. She's telling me in Spanish. She's like, what happened? And I'm responding to her in Spanish because she obviously knows that I don't, you know, it's embarrassing. She doesn't want anyone else to <laughs> understand what the fuck is going on. And I'm telling her like, I shit myself like it's bad. Um... And like, thank God you came or whatever. So I unlock the door. She comes in. She helps me get changed. The sink, everything. Like we were just washing what we could. And then we finally leave. And then we, my mom tells the nurse like, yeah, he had an accident in there. And it's like not clean. We're probably going to have to get like, you know, some disinfectants and stuff. And then the janitorial staff came in and cleaned that shit. So that was mad embarrassing. Again, shout out to the fucking elementary school nurse, Mrs. Willock. Forever going to hold a special place in my heart. Because that's not the only time she saved my ass. Um, the second time she did, this is now fast forwarding to high school. I was, uh, I was going to, so after elementary school, I went to middle school, right? And I guess now that I think about it, it kind of formed, you know, me shitting myself in the nurse's office kind of formed some underlying trauma, I guess, now that I'm like actually dissecting this out loud, like kind of, you know, processing this out loud. And now that I think about it from that day as from as long as I can remember, really in middle school, all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, anytime I needed to shit while I was at school, I would always go to the nurse's office. Middle school was a tough time for that because middle school, the nurse, I wasn't really close with her. She was kind of like, she was kind of like one of those nurses that like, you could fucking come in with like your arm hanging off of your, your fucking shoulder by like literally just a string of flesh. You got in some horrible accident, like wood shop or some shit in middle school, and you walk into the nurse's office, you could go in there and she would just say like, ah, put some ice on it, and then she'd send you back or some shit. She was zero tolerance for any bullshit. You'd have to have like a 105 degree fever for her to even remotely consider you sending sending you home for the day and calling your parents. She was, she was a savage. She's not a Hall of Fame fucking nurse. She's not goaded. Um, I don't remember her name, but I just remember her being kind of fucking rude about any time I needed to go in there uh, to get my shit checked out. And I would go into the nurse's office in, in middle school and high school to go shit, right? So middle school was dark years, but then in high school, it just so happened that the very year that I went into high school was also the same year that Mrs. Willock transferred from my elementary school, right, as a nurse there to the high school in our town as the nurse for the high school that same year. So that same year I fucking got there, she got there as the nurse. So already I'm like, yo, this is goaded. Like I'm a fucking eat lunch. I'm I'm a pig the fuck out. And then after I pig out, I'm a shit my brains out. Cause I already know I got the connections in the nurse's office. So I could just stroll in there and be like, yo, what's up, Mrs. W walk into the office, pull down my pants, shit myself, spray a little Febreze and then continue on with my day. So it was, it was, it was honestly like, that's what I did for like all of high school. And she knew it. She knew I'd come in. I'd be like, can I use the bathroom? She's like, of course I go in, use the bathroom. And you know, we keep it pushing. Well, this one time, this is not shit related. This is her saving, you know, saving me and, you know, being a good nurse. This is one time, actually, I think it was eighth grade as well. Tom, coincidentally, who's been on the podcast before, great friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends. He, at this time we were not close. This was during gym class. I remember the section that we were doing was volleyball, right? 
And this was later at later, like the later half of the day. There were nine periods in high school. This had to be somewhere like period f- like six through eight. Some it wasn't the last period of the day, but it was one of like the la- like the last periods of the day. And it was after lunch, and I just remember we were playing volleyball, and volleyball was like the one sport or segment in high school that I was remotely good at. Uh, mostly because of the fact that I was tall. So I could just jump and I could reach over the net and just block shots or hit it down or whatever. And, you know, I'm not the most athletic person and I definitely was not an athlete in high school at all in the slightest. So whenever volleyball came around, I felt like this was my one time to not shine, but like to, you know, just be present amongst my peers in high school, especially given the fact that our, our town was very athletic. Like they really valued... You know, all the cool kids were athletes, as is usually the case, but like everyone was involved in a sport, track, cross country, football, soccer, whatever it was. So I felt the need to, you know, like really be into volleyball. So this one segment or this one year during the uh, the volleyball section of uh, of the school year, we were we were playing and I remember Tom was on my team. And again, Tom and I were not friends at this point. This was during eighth grade and Tom was in the front row, right? I was in the middle row, in the middle. Tom was in the front left of the three rows on our side of the court. Tom's in the front left. I'm in the middle, middle. And the ball, it's during a game, whatever. The ball's going back and forth, back and forth. And then the ball starts come is hit in a way where it's coming right towards me. Like I see this thing go over the net and it's coming right towards me. I'm like, bet, I'm gonna just jump up and fucking hit that shit back over. Um, there was no proper bump set spike it's it's high school volleyball. It's just kind of like survival the fucking fittest. Like you just literally just hit that shit back and forth. So when it was coming to me, my plan was to jump up and hit it kind of like not up, but you know, kind of like parallel to the floor in a way where it was harder to hit for their side, right? So it comes at me, I jump. And as I jump up into the ball, I just remember seeing something fucking coming from like the left, but it was close and fast something coming from the left, and wouldn't you know, it It was fucking Tom. Now, just a little bit, bit of backstory about Tom. Tom is an athlete, always it was an athlete. Played basketball and even football in, in, uh, in high school, So he's always, and he's a very competitive dude, so he's always very involved in sports, and I remember he would just go for, you know, if, if the ball was going to our side of the court where it was like someone who's not as skilled, and he was like, this person's going to fuck up the point. He would go and kind of like either jump high to prevent them from getting it. Or he would kind of like go into their space. He's going to say that he wasn't in this case. But I fucking remember that shit coming right towards me. And rightfully so. He assumed like, yo, this oaf is not going to be able to get this goddamn point. So he jumped to try to go get it. Well, he didn't see me jump to the ball. And this guy had hops. Tom, Tom's built like a, he has a dump truck and he has calves for days. Because he, he got hops, that boy. So he fucking jumped way higher than I could, even me being the tall oaf I was, his fucking vertical was crazy, so he jumped way up, and I just remember seeing him come into my frame, hit the ball, and he got the point, to his credit, he got the fucking point, but on the way down from hitting the ball, his elbow comes down right into my fucking face, and I'm talking about like hard, not like it's a little bit of a, it's like it smacks right onto the fucking top of my nose, immediately I land it didn't even hurt just immediately upon landing I fucking go like this I just saw like kind of like a like a little bit of like a like you know tunnel vision because you just got hit really hard in your head so you're kind of like dazed and I'm confused I'm like whoa what the fuck just happened it didn't even hurt I'm just like oh that was weird and then I remember like looking up after I like you know landed I didn't land like on my back or anything I just landed on my feet I look up and someone in the gym class on our team Uh, I think this, it was a girl, Um, her name was Lauren, she looked at me, and I remember her face just turning like pale, and she goes, your nose, and then I remember feeling warm on my chest, right, through like warm wetness on my chest, and I look down, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with my nose, and then I look down, and I just see like two perfect tubes of blood, like it wasn't drips or drops of blood. It was literally fucking like just gushing out of my nose onto my shirt, onto the fucking floor. And I'm like, oh fuck. Like my nose is broken. I go into the gym locker room. 
uh, the boys' locker room. I look in the mirror, and this thing is just fucking like the top of my nose right here is just purple, and the fucking my nose is just gushing. It literally looked like I got hit by like a Justin Gaethje fucking elbow right to the goddamn top of my nose. And I grab some paper towels. I fucking go like this. It was at this point the adrenaline was still pumping, so it didn't hurt to you know like you know put some pressure on my face. And then I I asked my gym teacher like what should I do? And he's like you got to go to the nurse's office right now. I run to the nurse's office, and of course is Mrs. Willock again the fucking goat. She sees me and immediately is like, what happened? I'm like, I got elbowed in the face in gym class. She's like, your nose is definitely broken because it was fucking purple. And she's like, we got we to gotta put like, uh, it wasn't paper towels, but it was like specifically kind of like thick. Maybe, was it gauze? It might have just been gauze, but she rolled it up into like a very tightly rolled cylinder. And she sits me back in a chair. She shoves these things up my nose to prevent bleeding from happening. And it was like high up into my nose. And at that point, I remember feeling a little bit of pain, but again, the adrenaline was pumping. So it didn't hurt that bad. She then calls Nyack Hospital, which is the the nearest, like biggest hospital near our town. And she's like, hey, I got a high school kid here who's fucking, he got hurt, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to like call me or whatever. And she calls them. They tell her, yeah, like whatever you could bring them. And then my mom, she calls my mom. My mom comes to pick me up. And then my mom takes me to the fucking hospital. At this point, this was probably 30 minutes after the initial incident. I'm finally get through the hospital doors and my fucking, the adrenaline starts wearing off. And I just remember feeling like kind of like pulsating, radiating pain on my face. But that's not the part that killed. The part that killed is when the fucking doctor that came in to examine you know, my face, he pulled the, the gauze that Mrs. Willock had put up my nose. And when he pulled it, it was, he wasn't gentle. He just fucking, he uncorked it. And it was just like the blood had clotted around the gauze. And when he pulled it out, it kind of like pulled out the, the, the clot. And then it started bleeding again. And he was like, oh fuck. So he had to grab enough more gauze, shove it up there. I got an x-ray on my fucking head. It was clear as day, just broken all the way down the sides of my nose right here, all the way down. And there was probably like a millimeter of bone left that was still attached at the very base, at the bottom of my nose right here that prevented my my fucking, the bone part of my nose from just being free floating on my face. But one of the sides was kind of hit harder than the other. So my nose had a slight, like, you know, bend to it. Um, And my mom is like already freaking out because, you know, She's a Latin mother, so she's concerned. She's already thinking, like, how I'm going to look in the future or whatever. And she's telling the doctor, like, you know, like, who's going to fix his nose? Is like, is there, like, a plastic surgeon on on staff? And he's like, no, there's no plastic plastic surgeons or ENTs, actually. We just have, like, you know, general uh, emergency, you know, whatever, medicine doctors on staff right now. And, the, you know, the, the nearest one is going to take a couple days to get here or whatever. So it was just fucked. And my mom's like, well, his nose is crooked. And the doctor's like, well, I could, I could take a try of fixing it, but it's not going to be like, you know, perfect as if like, you know, if a, if a plastic surgeon were to come in and try to readjust the broken nose, we didn't have another option. So we ended up going with that. And the fucking guy, this is the part that killed. He goes up to my face and he just, I, the pressure was insane. And at this point there's no adrenaline and he just, uh, he just adjusts my fucking nose back center. And I heard because obviously it's in my head, right? I don't think it was audible to the people in the room, but in my experience, it was because it's the fucking nose is attached to my face, obviously. So I'm hearing like internal things like within, within my own face. And as he's pushing my nose to get it realigned, I just hear like cartilage and just fluid and then like bone. I don't know if it was bone, but like a like that, like slight. It's not, I'm not going to say it was like a crack and like a, you know, like thunder as loud as thunder. No, it was just like a little... And like that, he finally fucking pops this thing back into center alignment. I mean, to this day, I still have a fucking toucan nose. There's a bump here that I did not have from birth. And that is because Tom fucking broke my nose. But he adjusts it. And then he's like, all right, that's the best I could do. He puts like, you know, tape. And then he shoves gauze up my fucking nose. He's like, don't remove that. You're going to have to keep that in there for like the next two, three days. So I'm sitting there with just fucking gauze. My nostrils are just stretched the fuck out like. There's so much, there's like wads of gauze in my nose and my fucking face at this point, 
it wasn't just my nose that was purple. It was like to almost like here on my cheeks. My whole face was just fucking purple, battered and bruised. And all I remember after that was when I was leaning back, whenever I went to go to sleep, I just felt fluid keep going the like down my throat. I don't know if it was blood or not, but I just remember like every day at night, whenever I'd lay back, like, you know, put my head on the pillow, I just felt like I couldn't take a full breath because it was kind of like constant flowing of some sort of fucking fluid just going down my throat. It was disgusting. So that was not the best memory um, in hindsight, but it was definitely an eventful point of my life. Um, that that was that was crazy. So that was the time I broke my nose in high school. Uh, and the funny thing is actually, a side note here, Gata would probably tell this story better, but she's not here, so tough luck. Gata actually, um, she actually broke her nose playing volleyball too. Now, mind you, Catalina my sister played organized travel and high school volleyball for, I want to say somewhere North of like three years, like three to four years, definitely North of three years. I would say comfortably like four years of volleyball throughout high school, travel, volleyball, everything. So all of all the games she played and of all the fucking events that she attended for volleyball practices, everything, she never once had a serious injury. And of course, the one time she broke her nose was when we were playing backyard volleyball. And the person who broke my fucking sister's nose was actually also one of my friends. It wasn't Tom this time. Tom was on the other team, but it was Mike. And I remember vividly seeing this happen because we were in the backyard of my parents' house. We had like a, because she was so into volleyball and she was the athlete of the family out of me and her, my parents had built like, you know, a very makeshift rugged volleyball net with just like metal poles that we like screwed holes into. And then we just dug holes in the ground and put the metal poles into these like steel rods. So the net's probably seven and a half feet tall, the top of the net. It's not, I don't, I don't think that's official height, whatever it is, but it was just enough for us to practice and have fun summer games. So I remember this was like summer of 2000 and had to be like 18, some shit like that. Summer of 2018, we're playing volleyball in the backyard. It's kind of getting towards nighttime. It's not, it's like dusk. I would say the sun is not set, but it's setting. And it was like a cool blue. So you couldn't see, it wasn't like peak daylight. So you couldn't see the ball all too well while we were playing. Probably not the smartest fucking thing to do, but we'd played so many times, like literally hundreds of times in our backyard before then, because it was kind of like a summer tradition amongst me and my friends and Kata and her friends. So like we were used to it. And this one day we're playing, it's me and Tom on one team. I remember it's him and I on one team. And then all I remember from the other team is just Mike and Kata, right? And it was probably teams of like five versus five or four versus four. And the way we hit the ball over the net, we got competitive with it. The way we hit the ball over the net, it was like a spike. And it was right in between Gata and Mike. Gata's also a very competitive person. So is Mike. So they see this and there's no, there's not enough time for communication. So Gata instinctually as a volleyball player, she goes, she makes the dive for a bump, right? Right. So she goes and she dives for this fucking bump like this. She lays out and as she's diving for this ball, Mike is also coming in, but he doesn't have, you know, he's not diving like this, you know, like out, outstretched arms. He's kind of doing like one of these like tucked in ones because he didn't play organized volleyball. Um, I don't know what he's going to say about this, but I would argue Catalina's fundamentals, obviously, because she was, you know, formally trained or whatever the fuck. She played organized volleyball. So she understands, like, you know, the fundamentals a little bit better. So she had her arms laid out like this, right? And she dives. Mike comes in and he's going like this. But Mike had quicker, you know, reaction time. So he hit the ball. Well, as he dives to hit this fucking ball, my sister's also diving. And the way it worked out, he hits the ball, but his elbow, because his hands are, hands are tucked in, is out like this. And his elbow just goes directly into my fucking sister's face as they both dive. And I just remember seeing like, we hit it over. I don't think I was the one who hit it over, but I see the ball go over and I'm like, oh, we got this point easy. It goes towards the ground and I see the two of them. I'm like, oh fuck. It happened in slow motion. I see it and I just see, cause it was kind of like, it wasn't like me and Tom where Tom came down on me. It was like a colliding into each other, going horizontally, right? Both diving for the ball, like horizontally. So I see them dive. I see the collision. Boom. And I just remember seeing my sister's head like rock a little bit. 
not violently, not like she was fucking, you know, it's not like she was flatlined, but I just see her head rock back a little bit. She lays on the ground. Mike immediately after hitting the ball, he, he gets up off the floor and he looks at my sister. He's like, are you okay? My sister is down on her stomach, hands outstretched like this, head is in between her fucking uh, arms. And now at this point, she's supporting her weight with her, uh, her elbows and knees and her head's down like this. And she's like, ah, and I'm like, what the fuck? And she's kind of laughing funny enough. Like she didn't even, again, like she wasn't crying anything. She was, she had tears coming out of her eyes. Cause you know, like when you get hit in the nose, it's a little bit of a stinging pain. So obviously your eyes well up, but she wasn't crying from the, like the pain. It was just like a bodily reaction. She kind of had a little bit of a smirk on her face when she picks her head up. Her nose wasn't bleeding, but her nose more crooked than mine. Crooked as fuck. Like it was off to the fucking side. And I immediately was like, your nose is broken as shit. Thank God she didn't, you know, like burst any blood vessels. I don't think it was as hard of an impact as much as it was like a glancing blow. So it just was enough to break the bone, but not enough to, you know, just cause like just tissue damage where she was bleeding. Thank God. So she picks her head up. I'm like, your fucking nose is broken. Mike, I just, I feel so, I wish he was here to, for me to tell this story. He immediately just went like this. He was like, I'm so sorry. And he just like, he was speechless. He didn't know what the fuck to say. He's standing there like this, like his hands are covering his nose and mouth. He's speechless. Gata's laughing. She's like, it's okay. And she's kind of like looking around like days, like not knowing what to do. At this point, all the uh, friends of Gata's who were there, I think Demetra was there or Demetra might've come to pick her up, whatever. Point is, they were supporting her. They're like, oh my God. So they immediately grab her, take her inside to my, you know, like they're comforting her. She's like kind of like shocked and laughing this whole time. She was a champ about it. I, I'm i like telling Mike, like, dude, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But like, I'm going to go to the hospital with her now. Like you, like guys, uh, you know, because it was at my house. I'm like, all right, guys, um, everybody just, you know, go home. I don't know. You, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So everyone leaves my house. I fucking go with my sister to the hospital. The, I had to call my mom and tell her, hey, your daughter broke her nose playing volleyball this time. She immediately starts crying because she doesn't know what the fuck her face looks like. We get to the hospital. The doctor is like, yep, that shit's broken as fuck. Her nose is like literally like off. It's not like mine where like the top of it was kind of rotated to the side. Her shit was literally like clicked and it was like the top of her nose was here. Then it swerved back to the bottom of her nostrils being here. It was, it was fucked up. And... The, the doctor's like, yeah, your shit's fucked, but we're not going to touch it. And of course, Gata, I mean, this is the way it should be, you know, because uh, she definitely deserves the better treatment. Gata actually got the ENT to perform the proper procedure on her. And then now, if you, that's why if we sit here side by side, her nose virtually looks like almost, un, the, the difference is probably not recognizable to the naked eye. Gata might be able to say she can see, you know, slight differences, but I, I don't notice any difference in her nose. And I would argue that most people, if they see pictures of her from before the summer of 2018, they couldn't even fucking tell that she broke her nose either. That ENT, that plastic surgeon or whatever it was that actually did that procedure on her face, they, they, they fucking did a hell of a job. Because her shit looks exactly the same as it did before. And it's funny because, like, we both broke our nose playing volleyball, but she ended up looking, you know, the same. I, my ass definitely looks different from that. So those are just a couple stories. Um, episode 50, medical mishap episode. Uh, you know, another 50 to come. Very excited. Um, I'm really happy to have made this investment um, for the podcast. It's definitely going to be motivational for me to, you know, it's going to, it's going to motivate me to record more episodes going forward. Uh, if you have anything to say about, you know, the way or any topics you'd like to meet for me to cover in solo episodes, please let me know in the comments and also just give me constructive feedback because it's, it is difficult to kind of record these episodes on your own. Um, it's kind of weird just sitting here in front of the camera and just talking about like, shit that happened to me or just covering random topics without actually interacting with someone and engaging in conversation, which is, you know, really what a podcast is supposed to be about. But I got some really good episodes in the pipeline. Um, there's some really cool guests that, that I'm in the talks with of potentially coming on. And there's, you know, already people that I've spoken to. I mean, you know, familiar faces, Andy, Mike, um, Vishal, all those good guys, they're going to come on and, you know, tell more of their stories because believe it or not, uh, you know, we're, we're kids from a small town, but we've all lived pretty good lives, pretty memorable lives thus far. 
And, you know, there's a lot of shit that funny stories that we have to tell. So it's going to be a good time. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to episode 50. Please like and subscribe all that fucking social media shit. And until next time, cue the outro music. First time with the fucking new gear and everything. Same headphones though. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Till next time, see y'all later. Peace out. <laughs>